Hey guys, welcome to Easy Academy. Today we're going to be learning about confidence intervals. So what exactly do confidence intervals even tell us? Well, supposedly I want to know the average height of everyone in the United States in inches. Well, it's just not feasible for me to go around to every single person in the United States and measuring their height, so we can use confidence intervals to narrow things down. So let's say, for example, I went to 100 people and surveyed them and found their heights. And I found a confidence interval, a 95% confidence interval of between 65 inches to 73 inches. So what exactly is this confidence interval telling us? Well, it's telling us that there's a 95% chance that the true height, average height of everyone in the United States exists between 65 inches to 73 inches. So in essence, this confidence interval allows us to use smaller amounts of data from only around 100 people to estimate and extrapolate larger conclusions about the entire population that we are targeting, and in this case, it's the heights of everyone in the United States. So how exactly do you solve for confidence intervals? Well, for means, you use these two equations over here. So how do you choose which equation to use? If you know the standard deviation of the population that you are gathering data on, you use the top equation right here, and if you don't, use the second one. Why? Because sometimes the standard deviation of the population, or this value right here, simply has not been collected yet because data on an entire population is sometimes hard to come by, so you simply cannot use the top equation. Instead, use the standard deviation of a sample that you collect, which is much more feasible. So you might be also wondering what the Z star and T star values here are too. Well, these are called critical values, and they're the second way in which these two equations are different besides the standard deviation part. So how do you find these critical values? Well, you have to use a special chart. All right, so this is a special chart that you have to use. So for Z star values, it's very, very simple. You just look at the bottom of the chart and you line up with whatever confidence level that you want to use. So for example, if you want a 95% confidence level, you use the value 1.960. Now for T star values, it's a bit more complicated. You have to look at the rest of the values and you basically have to play a little bit of battleship as you try to line up your degrees of freedom or DF over here and your confidence level. So how exactly do you find your degrees of freedom? You just take your sample size and you subtract by one. So for example, if you had a sample size of 20, then your degrees of freedom is 19. So let's say that your sample size is 20 and you're trying to get a 95% uh, level of confidence. So for that, you just go over to 19 and you look at the 95% confidence level column and you can see that the value that you're going to be using for your T star is 2.093. So now let's do a practice problem incorporating everything we just learned. So let's say we want the average amount of statistics students in each school and we draw a random sample of 25 schools and found that the average number of statistics students in each school was 50 with a standard deviation of 5. So what is the 95% confidence interval here? So first we want to determine which equation we want to use and because we only know the standard deviation of the sample that we took, we have to use the second equation because we don't know the standard deviation of the entire population of schools. So for that, the equations can be that the confidence interval is equal to the average amount of statistics students in each school from the sample plus or minus the T star value times the standard deviation of the sample over the square root of the sample size. So to fill in these values, it would be 50 plus or minus T star times the standard deviation, which is going to be 5 of the sample over the square root of the sample size, which was 25 schools. So here we need to fill in the T star value. So for that, we need degrees of freedom. And if you remember, the degrees of freedom is equal to the sample size subtract by one. So it's going to be 25 minus one or 24. And now we have to find the 95% confidence interval. So let's line up the 95% confidence interval with the 24 degrees of freedom. So over here, we see that the 24 degrees of freedom and the 95% confidence interval would be at the value of 2.064. So for this value, it'd be equal to 50 plus or minus 2.064 times 5 over the square root of 25. Now for this, if you want to simplify, it's going to be 50 plus or minus 2.064 over 1. So the confidence interval here is going to be 50 plus or minus 2.064. So if you want to simplify that down, it's going to be equal to 
47.936 comma 52.064 so this interval essentially means that there's a 95 percent chance that the average amount of statistics students in each school in the country exists between 47.936 and 52.064 I tried so hard.